Hi there, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go for a trip around London on the iconic London buses and tell you all about this iconic mode of transport in London. My name's Steve, and each week I'll bring to you the facts, history, and information about different parts of this great capital or items associated with it. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this item and so many other places and things across London. And now, to this week's podcast. Buses have been using the streets of London since 1829, when George Shillybeer started operating his horse-drawn omnibus service from Paddington to the city. In 1850, Thomas Tilling started horse bus services, and in 1855, the London General Omnibus Company, LGOC, was founded to amalgamate and regulate the horse-drawn omnibus services, then operating in London. LGOC began using motor omnibuses in 1902, and manufactured them itself from 1909. In 1904, Thomas Tilling started his first motor bus service. The last LGOC horse-drawn bus ran on the 25th of October 1911, although independent operators used them until 1914. In 1909, Thomas Tilling and LGOC entered into an agreement to pool their resources. The agreement restricted the expansion of Thomas Tilling in London and allowed the LGOC to lead the amalgamation of most of London's bus services. However, also in 1909, Thomas Clarkson started the National Steam Car Company to run steam buses in London, in competition with the LGOC. In 1919, the national company reached agreement with the LGOC to withdraw from bus operation in London, and steam bus services ceased later that year. In 1912, the Underground Group, which at that time owned most of the London Underground, bought the LGOC. In 1933, the LGOC, along with the rest of the Underground Group, became part of the new London Passenger Transport Board, The name London General was replaced by London Transport, which became synonymous with the Red London Bus. Bus numbers were first used in 1906. When the independent firm started in 1922, they used general route numbers, along with alphabetical suffixes, to denote branch routes. In 1924, under the London Traffic Act, the Metropolitan Police was authorised to allocate route numbers, which all buses had to carry. This ultimately led to chaos, and... In the London Passenger Transport Act of 1933, the power to allocate route numbers was taken away from the police and handed once again to professional busmen. Suffixes were gradually abolished over the decades, and the last such route in London being the 77A, which became the 87 in June 2006. The LPTB, under Lord Ashfield, assumed responsibility for all bus services in the London Passenger Transport area, an area with a radius of about 30 miles from central London. This included the London General Country Buses, later to be called London Transport's Green Buses, Green Line Coaches, and the services of several Tilling Group and independent companies. London Buses continued to operate under the London Transport name from 1933 to 2000, although the political management of transport services changed several times. The LPTB oversaw transport from 1933 to 1947, when it was nationalised and became the London Transport Executive. 1948-1962. to The responsible authority for London Transport was then successively the London Transport Board, 1963-1969, to the Greater London Council, 1970-1984, to and London Regional Transport, 1984-2000. to However, in 1969, a new law transferred the Green Country buses outside the area of Greater London Council to the recently formed National Bus Company, trading under the name London Country. The Green Buses and Green Line Coaches became the responsibility of a new NBC subsidiary, London Country Bus Services, on the 1st of January 1970. A former network of express buses operated by London Transport in central London was the Red Arrows. The routes, all numbered in the 500s, ran from the mainline stations to various locations in the West End and City. They were introduced in 1966 and expanded in 1968, but in the 1990s, they were gradually phased out and only two former routes, the 507 and the 521, remain. In 1974, Jill Viner became the first female bus driver for London Transport. From the early days of motor bus operation by the London General Omnibus Company, LGOC, in the 1900s until the 1960s, London went its own way, designing its own vehicles specially for London use, 
rather than using the bus manufacturer's standard products used elsewhere. The Associated Equipment Company, AEC, was created as a subsidiary of the LGOC in 1912 to build buses and other equipment for its parent company, and continued in the ownership of the LGOC and its successes until 1962. Many of London's local buses over this period were built by AEC, although other manufacturers also built buses to London designs, or modified their own designs for use in London. The last bus specifically designed for London was the AEC Routemaster, built between 1956 and 1968. Since then, buses built for London's local services have all been variants of models built for general use elsewhere. Although bus manufacturers would routinely offer a London specification to meet specific London requirements, some manufacturers even went so far as to build new models with London in mind, such as the Daimler Fleetline and Leyland Titan. London did see the introduction of several of the newly emerging minibuses and midibuses models in the 1980s and 1990s, and a bid to up the frequency on routes. Although the use of these buses dropped off to the level of niche operation on routes not suitable for full-size buses. With the move to tendered contracts for TFL routes, the London specification was further enforced as being part of tender proposals, invariably specifying new buses. The major difference for London is the usage of dual doors on central routes. London was one of the earliest major users of low-floor buses. From 2000, the mainstay of the fleet, double-decker buses, were augmented with a fleet of articulated buses, rising to a peak fleet size of 393 Mercedes-Benz Citros. These were introduced to help replace the AEC Routemaster, as well as to cope with an increased capacity. A small fleet of hybrid buses was also introduced. In 2008, London Mayor and Election Campaign Prospective Mayor Boris Johnson made several commitments to change the London Buses Vehicle Policy, namely to introduce a new Routemaster and remove the Bendy Buses. Johnson was elected to office on the 4th of May 2008, and on the 4th of July 2008, Transport for London announced the new Bus for London competition, in which conceptual and detailed design proposals would be sought for a new hybrid Routemaster, with the development of a design that could be put into production hoped for completion by 2012, the expected date of the next mayoral election. Hi there, and thanks so much for listening to this podcast on the history of London. And if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now, if you want to get more involved with London Visited, don't forget you can join us as a member by going to patreon.com forward slash London Visited with so many different benefits. Or you could purchase a 4K photograph of London from our website, londonvisited.co.uk, both of which support us and keep the channel going. Once again, thanks for listening. And now back to the podcast. In August 2008, the London Transport Commissioner, Peter Hendry, announced that the withdrawal of the Bendy buses would have taken place starting in 2009. So, as to reduce additional cost to TfL, the buses would be withdrawn as their five-year operating contracts came up for renewal, with the replacement types being decided by operators. Options for replacement would not preclude such measures as tri-axle buses. However, research has indicated that removing articulated vehicles may not be without cost. London Travel Watch undertook a study in September 2008, which found that to replace articulated vehicles on three bus routes, and maintain overall route capacity would cost an additional £12.6 million per annum due to the additional vehicles needed. On the 7th of December 2008, Johnson appeared as the star in a reasonably priced car in BBC Two's Top Gear, in which Jeremy Clarkson questioned him about his plans to withdraw Bendy buses, which, as he pointed out, Johnson had announced he planned to do many months prior to this and asked when he actually planned to put this into practice to which Johnson replied they would be off the road by around 2010. The first buses to be withdrawn would be the Red Arrow fleet on routes 507 and 521, although the latter route requires single-decker buses as it runs through the Strand underpass in May 2009. The last were withdrawn on the 9th of December 2011. In May 2010, Mayor of London Johnson revealed the design of the new Routemaster. The proposed replacement for the Routemaster was an iconic standard bus, for exclusive use in London. The buses, designed by Heatherwick Studio and built by Wright Bus, feature two staircases, three doors and an open platform allowing passengers to hop on and off, commencing operation in 2012. In December 2011, the British car magazine Autocar road-tested the new Routemaster, 
is said it had a brilliant economy and an interior to die for. The best in public transport. It rated it ahead of the Wright Gemini Hybrid 2, Mercedes-Benz Ciatro, and the AEC Routemaster. However, in December 2016, the new mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, decided that no more orders would be placed for the bus after only 1,000 of Johnson's envisaged fleet of 2,000 had been procured. In 2020, Transport for London announced that the new route masters would be converted so passengers could enter by the front door with the middle and rear doors becoming exit only. This was done to reduce fare evasion, which had been double that of other London buses. Hybrid buses first entered service in 2006 and now make up 40% of the 9,000 strong bus fleet. It was originally intended that every bus introduced into service after 2012 would be a hybrid, but this requirement was later dropped. Electric buses first entered service in 2014, and London now has the largest electric bus fleet in Europe, with over 300 fully electric buses in service. The Mayor of London is currently aiming for a zero emission bus fleet by 2037. From autumn 2020, all new single-deck buses entering the fleet will be electric or hydrogen zero-emission buses. The rear entrance double-deck AEC Routemaster has been withdrawn from all regular service routes. A small fleet is retained to operate on the Heritage Route 15. Route 9H was withdrawn on the 26th of July 2014. AEC Routemaster buses are not accessible to passengers in wheelchairs and other mobility-impaired passengers. Because of this, the Heritage Route is operated as a short working of a regular service route bearing the same route number, thus ensuring that passengers unable to board the Heritage buses are offered equivalent alternative transport arrangements. As of March 2020, the London bus fleet total 9,102 buses, including 3,773 hybrid buses, 316 electric buses and 10 hydrogen buses. Route 25 running between Holborn Circus and Ilford is the busiest bus route. The service carried over 19 million passengers in 2015-16. The next busiest routes, over 10 million passengers, are the 18, 29, 149, 207, 83, 38, 5, 86, 140, 279, 73, 243, 109, 43, and 36. Is it me, or does this feel like bingo? The route, U9, has the highest mean observed speed of daytime routes at 18.8 miles per hour. And the slowest route is the 15H at 3.8 miles per hour. Yep, it's almost better getting out, looking at the bus and walk past it. The route X26, running from Croydon to Heathrow, is the longest daytime route at 24 miles. So I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at the London buses and some of the stats as well. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe to get updates on new shows and also please do leave us some feedback. Please also let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts and you can let me know through our website www.londonvisited.co.uk by emailing me directly on londonvisited at gmail.com or you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at London Visited or Facebook on at The London Visited. Thanks for listening. Really hope you enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care. Bye.